Okay, right, this is a, a Chinese insect killer thing um, and it attracts insects with the blue LEDs and then it's got electrified grid and I was just playing about with it and shorting out the grid with a screwdriver because the cover just comes off and you can short things out and it made a bit of a bang and lots of smoke came out of it so um, anyway, let's investigate further so the instructions are pretty spectacular it says, we'll start down at C this go out as save energy mosquito utensil is adornment, hypnotic quiet, serio light designer, so must eschew lighting strong lights usage, usage whether then right direct effect go out mosquito effect. For example, sleep front bedroom not open lamp first use go out mosquito utensil, come up to suddenly turn off all lighting strong light 10 to 20 minute or job study shibami. Mosquito utensil set, free in dark place, all is very effective usage. Oh, that's stinking. That is really making a strong electronic smell. Um, so, yes, uh, let's uh, open it up. I should mention that uh, uh, while I was playing about that, I unplugged it and touched the front and got quite a zap off it. It actually made a pop noise when I touched the front with my finger. The finger of electrical knowledge told all. So, no discharge resistors there. I'm just going to uh, actually, yeah, okay. Let's uh, pop the lid and see uh, what's uh, been emitting smoke. It was subtle, electronic -y smoke, suggesting maybe the voltage multiplier has copped it, or a capacitor, who knows. Power consumption is very low, plugged it into the power meter, that's before I blew it up, and it wouldn't even register in the power meter. Uh, nothing visibly. All the tracks are there, which is a good start. Um, being a bit ginger here, because it was voltage multiplier, there may be things with a... Uh, hmm. Charge on them. So let's, uh, let's short things out, shall we? Just as a wee precaution. Oh, it's absolutely stinking. I'll just short all those capacitors out in there. And let's investigate. Right, okay, that's a dead. So, God, every single capacitor is different in this. I was expecting if it was going to be a voltage multiplier, I was going to expect similar capacitors. I can see some, uh, I think that diode's sad. I think that may be what has actually failed, is the diode. Or is it that capacitor? Oh no, it's, oh well, no, no, it's hard to tell actually. Has that capacitor blown out the side or? It's a bit of a, 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 kind of not what I was expecting inside. That's a very cheap capacitor. They've, this is a, obviously a cheapie that they've got because it's like a manufacturing reject. This is not what I was expecting inside. I was expecting a voltage multiplier, but the voltage multiplier, you'd expect at least two pairs of the capacitors to be similar, but these are, every single one's different. I don't know if the LED circuit, I don't, I see a bridge rectifier which could be tied to the LED. But then again, if it's I've got a voltage multiplier as well, the LEDs are wired rather oddly by the look of it. Okay, tell you what, I'm going to pause right now and I'm going to reverse engineer the circuit board and come back. That's more like it. Right. Well, now all the magic tracks have disappeared in a puff of smoke and the incoming main supply wires have blown completely off the circuit board in the process. It appears the fault, and I'll still tread gingerly here because um, this could be uh, still be holding a charge in some of these other capacitors. The side of this capacitor has just, well, I guess it's probably somewhere in the room. I'm not 100% sure. It's, uh, it's blown clean off. Um, but anyway... I digress in an amusing manner because that just made this totally worth every single penny I spent on it. Here is the circuit board. 
And what I've done here is I took a photo of the circuit board, the back of it, the tracks, before I blew them to smithereens. Um, or should I say, it, I kind of, it kind of blew itself to smithereens. So I don't feel bad about that at all. Um, so I took a photo and I then put it into... Um, uh, what's uh, Orphan View, that's the name of the package I used. And I... Uh, flipped it over so it was the same direction that, that I was looking as if you were looking through the circuit board and I used the gamma correction option to actually fade it right down to an outline. Then I drew the outline of the circuit board, uh, drew the outline of the tracks um, with the pads on them, just marked, and then overlaid all the components to reverse engineer it. And it's quite interesting. So this is the component here that's just exploded. And that equates to one of these comp these capacitors here. I'm not sure which one it is. It's the one that's going um, positive. So it's this one that's blown up. But here's the circuit diagram. It splits out into, into two distinct sections. Looking at the LEDs, the LEDs are on their own little circuit board and they're wired really oddly. Um, there's a 220 nanofarad capacitor with a 1 mega ohm discharge resistor across it, which is nice, an 8th watt one, which is not nice, and a 560 ohm, in ohm inrush limiting resistor, and then it's two inverse parallel arrays of LEDs. Ignore that little link in the middle. It's easier if you just look at it as the two inverse parallel pairs of LEDs, so they light alternately. That little link in the middle had me sort of thrown for a while. I thought it was a wee bit odd. Um, it, I th the only reason I can think for that is that if they have a large parallel array like that, then the reverse voltage could potentially, I mean, if the reverse voltage of these LEDs is typically about 5 volts, and if you've got two in series, then you're going to get 6 volts across that, and if one's got a lower, one's leaking a current in reverse voltage, it could theoretically exceed the reverse voltage of the other. But by tying them across, you get the voltage divided at that point uh, as 3 volts across that LED, 3 volts across that LED, and the maximum reverse voltage each of these LEDs is going to see as three volts uh, is going to see as three volts too. So that makes sense, I suppose. Now the voltage multiplier is just the fuck it, it's just random capacitors. They're all now the bigger one is the um, 220 nanofarad for the LEDs, the one that's got the big skid mark down the side now. The other ones, they're all 100 nanofarad. They're just random capacitors, and these have um, about best part of 700 volts across them, a couple of them. Not these ones. They, these ones actually only have about... Uh, well, they are c connected across the mains with a diode, so these ones are probably... Uh, they're only going to see about um, peak mains rectified voltage, about 330-ish volts um, in the UK. But uh, it's a dual uh, multiplier, and the, basically what happens here is that there's a positive multiplier and a negative multiplier, and it just it's an easy, simple way. Instead of using one long multiplier to get up to the voltage, they use two. Um, it's a common enough technique, and it creates the high voltage. Um, what actually happens here is that when live is positive, or should I say live is negative, and the neutral is positive, uh, current flows through the diode and charges this capacitor up to about 330 volts. When the polarity changes and this then live then goes positive and this goes negative, then the end of this capacitor, capacitor is now connected to ground, it's negative, and um, the positive voltage here pushes the the capacitor, the capacitor actually rides up in it, so you end up with the peak mains voltage of about 330 volts, plus what was on that capacitor, which is another 330 volts, pushed through that diode and onto this one, and you'll end up with about six or 700 volts on this diode. Just under, uh, it worked out, with the two uh, added together, it worked out 1.334 kilovolts. And to get that, I actually uh, had the circuit live and poked across it with the meter, but only across one side at a time, because uh, the meter is only rated for about 1,000 volts. But um, it's an interesting approach, but there's not any real good isolation, because this can go in any way round. And if you touch the grid in the front, which is just, you know, you just pull this plastic grill off and it's exposed, um, then that, the only thing between you effectively and the mains is two diodes. So, um, mm, not necessarily, not necessarily very safe, but then again, 
Um, yeah, not necessarily very safe at all, particularly given the strange, cheapy components. I mean, they've gone to the they've gone to the expense of building this plastic moulding with the with all the metal frames put in it. It just seems a shame they've kind of uh, used this motley selection of random capacitors. But um, here we go. I'll put this over here in case you want to try and reverse engineer it yourself. So it's one two hundred twenty nano farad. Uh, four 100 nanofarad capacitors, that's these ones, the, the exploding ones, and uh, four diodes, which I'm guessing, I've not really looked at that, I'm guessing they're 1N4007. Uh, if I can actually see through all the suit now, yeah, I'd make a wild guess that they're that, but uh, you just never know given the ratings of these capacitors. That one is most certainly not rated for 630 volts, I shouldn't think, at 100 nanofarad. It's very odd indeed, but quite amusing I have to say.